fluted marble around your island and like all of these things. We want that, sure, but that's gonna cost this. Deirdre Jorson is an award-winning designer and founder of Ottawa's Eastboro Designs. With a design philosophy steeped in courage and uniqueness, Deirdre balances timeless materials with bold details to create a lasting trademark style in the design industry. I think of it more as like interior architecture in a way, so it still allows the creativity with some structure. Deirdre is also a spirited public speaker with a passion for informing homeowners on how to achieve a space with swagger, but more importantly, how to work successfully with an interior designer. The budget conversation, small or big, is probably the biggest hurdle, okay. but it's the most important conversation to have, and not just once. Welcome to Blueprint Banter. Do me a solid and hit that subscribe button. Doing so allows me to bring in amazing guests and keep the content rolling. Plus, you get notified right away when we release a new video, which I'm sure you're going to want to know. So without further ado, let's dig in. Design. Yes. Renovations. It's what I do. It's what yes. you do. It's what you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's important. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. We're, we're laughing because there's so much wrapped into one word when it comes to renovation and design. And also so many misconceptions, I would say, too. Yeah. Of like what's actually involved. Yeah. Which you and I talk about on an ongoing basis. <laughs> yeah. And that's why you were here first. Oh, first? This is You're like first. the first? This is the <gasps> first. This is the de debut? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I feel so special. And we're going to talk about design, what your process is, how we got here. <laughs> and then I'm going to ask you all the typical questions that you ask a designer about design trends. Okay. About budget-friendly renovations versus highly customized renovations. But mm -hmm. let's talk about you for one second. Sure. How did you get to be an award-winning designer? Oh, gosh. I went to school for interior design. Like, okay. in high school, I knew fairly early on that I wanted to do something creative. Yeah. And I didn't even know that interior design was even an option. I always thought, which I think a lot of people still think, that interior design is interior decorating. So I was like, well, I don't want to go and you know, just go to school for picking paint colors and not to knock decorators. It's just a very, it's a very different specialty. Okay. I do a lot of what a decorator does and a lot of decorators do some tasks that an interior designer does. Mm -hmm. So there is some overlap, but right. I, I think of it more as like interior architecture in a way. Okay. So it still allows the creativity with some structure. And um, I went to school for interior design and I, Okay. graduated and I've been in the business ever since. So, I mean, because you brought it up, like the way I see it as a general contractor is um, if I need a wall painted, I'm going to call an interior decorator. If I need a wall moved, I'm going to call a designer. There you go. You know, that's kind of how it is in sure. my head. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's kind of like high level, maybe. I don't think that insults anyone the way I said it, but. I don't think so. I mean, I'm sure there are some people that might be like, oh my God, how dare you? But. <laughs> Even even when it comes to, you know, a, a wall removal or moving or what have you, I still also turn to my engineers and I turn to my architectural technologists and because mm -hmm. there's still, you know, um, information, code requirements that I am not going to be exposed to day in and day out. Okay. So it's still very collaborative. Right. But I try and oversee all aspects of the design process mm -hmm. and to understand what an engineer or what a tech might be looking for as well mm -hmm. right. to then better inform clients as they go through a process. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's all about communication when you're dealing with clients, right? Yeah. And you have to, I would say that your relationship with a client, I mean, I use the word intimate is, 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 is more intimate than my you know, reaction or de dealing with a client, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm talking about the nuts and bolts of how we're going to do something. You're talking about the flow of what we're doing in that bathroom or how we're using that bathroom or how we're using that kitchen. Absolutely. You know, I mean, some conversations do get fairly intimate and in talking mm -hmm. about the shower and what they want to do in the shower <laughs> and all of those things. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, if I don't ask, then it's not going to really be personalized. And right. that's what I pride myself in is providing not just a design service that is um, curated for that client, but also the design itself because it is their home at the end of the day. Right. Even in renovations where it can be quote unquote cookie cutter or remove and mm -hmm. reinstall, yeah. I still think that they need to be customized. Okay. So I ask all the same questions regardless of 
the budget and regardless of the scope of work. Okay. Yeah. Just so you can get to know the client. Yeah, get because there's means. there you know, I can design a space 10 different ways. Mm -hmm. I don't want you know, their kitchen to be the exact same as, you know, the yeah. Smiths down the road. Mm -hmm. Right. I love that. Like when someone goes on social media and they say, Ryan, build me that kitchen. I'm like, no problem. I'll order you the tiles right now. Probably have some left over, <laughs> you know, because it's it re just requires no work. But in the end, the client is typically they, they do customize along the way, which is more expensive. Yeah, it can be. Yeah. It can be. Doesn't, I think it always is. It doesn't always have to be. Mm -hmm. I think there's a way to, you know, research and be exposed to <clears throat> a bunch of different, um, you know, whether it's building methods or material availability, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Because it, it, it suits different price points as well. Yeah. Let's talk about your most recent award, the kitchen that had a chicken in it. Coop, there it is. Coop, there it is. Yeah. And you say it properly. Okay. Because you've probably been exposed to the song. <laughs> Ooh, there it is. Yes, yes. Yes. People born in the 2000s okay. did not get the, the reference. No? No. Huh. Okay. No. And I, I was like, oh, gosh. I feel like I've dated myself. <laughs> it happens. It happens. We're in the, we've are in. we been in the business Every once a in a while, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, boy. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about the design process for that kitchen because there was a lengthy design process of that kitchen, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in that process, the the architectural designer was actually brought in before me, which okay. is fine. Yeah. You know, um, there tends to be more points of contact and more moving parts. I find that the way I provide a design service to a client, I become that one touch point yeah. <laughs> for communication that I can then facilitate, you know, communication and you know, just everything can kind of fall under my umbrella. Right. Um, but with the tech that that we use on that project, and I continue to use to this day, and I've mm. worked with, you know, in a, a place that shall not be named, <laughs> um, prior to that, uh, we work really well together. So, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter that they came in prior to right. me. And, yeah. okay. um, but we did work together and we work off, off of the same drawing software, which is really okay. great. So I can just jump right into that drawing right. software and just do my own thing okay. and then flip it back to them for the permit set. Okay. Um, yeah, because you don't, you, you weren't <clears throat> part of the permit because of the architecture for the permit, right? You don't do that. No. So anytime that, you know, there is anything um, structural uh, where we have to bring an engineer in or if we're relocating plumbing, mm -hmm. um, we will require a, a set of permit drawings. Yeah. Um, I can still do the concept and still do even the construction drawings. Right. Um, and then I would either get them ready for permit or um, flip it back to the architectural technologist so they okay. can continue on. Because in this case here, we had additional glazing. So windows mm -hmm. um, or a window that we were um, increasing um, on the side of the house. Right. When we moved the wall, it just opened up more options. And that's where the sink is actually placed in, right. in this um, okay. renovation. Yeah. So calculating the glazing and all of that as part of that whole exterior elevation is something that the architectural technologist has to do. Okay. Yeah. I want to back it up to how did you go about starting the plan process when you arrived on site the first day or dealing with the client before the general contractor started swinging a hammer? So I do what we call a design kickoff. So, you know, once they've decided to go ahead with me and my design services in the process, yeah. Um, typically I would, you know, come back and do a laser measure either okay. myself or with my architectural technologist. Mm -hmm. In this case, it was done prior to. Yeah. So when I sat with these clients, I talked about what their requirements were for the space, the, um, the need for, you know, a more open kitchen, which was fairly open to the living room in the first place. Okay. So when they say we want to open it up, well, what does that mean? Cause right. it's already fairly open. Mm -hmm. Um, we talked about the underutilized dining room that was directly behind the kitchen, which yeah. was such a meandering. It was it was so awkward to kind of get to. You were really leaving the kitchen to go into the living room to get back into the dining room. Right. So it was kind of awkward and they mm -hmm. weren't really using it. So okay. I talk about <clears throat> reutilizing unused uh, real estate right. and putting it into the spaces that are really needed. And uh -huh. in this case, a kitchen, which is what 
you know, increases the value in a home, kitchens yeah. and bathrooms, right? Yeah. Uh, increase value when they're done properly, <laughs> right? And, you know, they, they wanted to have just like this, this, this space that was much more open for entertaining. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted the viewpoint from the living room to be, you know, really inviting and they okay. wanted to be in the kitchen and, and be part of the conversation in the living room yep. because the way they had it was this, you know, tiny U shaped kitchen. And it was, it was so disproportionate, the kitchen footprint to the mm -hmm. size of the rest of the house. Okay. So in taking some of that extra space and incorporating into the kitchen, it just made way more sense. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is good. So the first thing that you're going to do is chat with the clients, understand mm -hmm. what they want to do. That's right. Envision it, draw it. That's right. But then I know that there's the design flair that you give. Yep. Right. Yeah. Um, and I know that in that design flair, the mm -hmm. thing that we want to do for the client, we also have today's design trends. Yep. That you have to be aware mm -hmm. of. And, and I want to talk to the viewer about. How do you keep up with design trends? Like I pe hear people say to me all the time, oh, you know, gray um, plank flooring, laminate plank flooring is in. And I'm like, well, where was where? <laughs> yeah. Show me. <laughs> you know, but we install an awful lot of it. Yeah. An awful lot of it. Right. Yeah. So I would consider that a trend. But is it a trend that is, that high end designers are doing and winning awards with? Probably not. Yeah. <sighs> It's, it's such a hard question to answer. And so what I tell a lot of clients is the part that I don't know about you is how quickly you tire of something, mm -hmm. right? Because if you love something, trendy or not, it doesn't matter. You love it. You yeah. love it. Mm -hmm. I think that question gets asked more so for homeowners who are looking to renovate and move within like a 10 year span yeah. because they're not only just designing for themselves, but they're designing for a future potential buyer. Right. Right. When you're designing for say like a, a five year plan, you're really selling for resale, in which case you really don't want to personalize. You want something that's going to be more timeless. That's going to attract more potential buyers. Right. And then I would say like 10 years, 15 years plus you're designing for yourself. And it's not that it doesn't matter for a potential buyer, but I think a lot of the decisions are, you know, about somebody else coming in are just, they, they don't weigh as heavily. Right. Right. Yeah. And so that conversation about budget also comes into play with how much somebody is willing to, you know, spend on a renovation, whether it's for a short amount of time or a longer amount, like a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about trends, you know, I say to, them, say to clients, you know, how quickly do you tire of, you know, your clothing? I mean, that is obviously a much easier, right. you know, yeah. thing to change out. And then right. a lot of the com like a lot of the jokes are like, well, he's put up with me for however long. Or, right. oh, she's put up with me for 20 years. Right. Yeah. Right. But yeah. I mean, you just, you know, just chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, though. I mean, I can't comment as to how long it's going to take until that person tires of it. Okay. So when you're talking about trends and, you know, styles that go in and out, if somebody just really, really loves it and they've seen the white shaker kitchen and gray bathrooms and this gray marbly looking quartz countertop and it's no longer in mm -hmm. trend, but they've been dreaming about it for 10 years, who might have say that they can't have it? Yeah. I, you know what? I'm happy to hear you <clears throat> say that because we do, an, people ask me all the time recently, we're doing an addition. Yes. I called you in. Yeah. Because they asked for my opinion as to what I see and what I like. And how'd I that go? I laughed. I <laughs> laughed. How'd that go? <laughs> and I said, I said I'm, I'm, you know what? Whatever you'd like. I can't see it from my house. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't matter. Exactly. You know, um, I can install it and make it look great. Because when I look at a product, I look past the color. Mm -hmm. You know, I look past the flow. I look at how it's functioning as a contractor. Yeah. Like, how was it installed? Mm -hmm. You know, was the manufacturer's recommended installation guide followed? Mm -hmm. You know, can I warranty this product? Is it going to last the test of time? Yep. I don't necessarily ever think about will my client tire of this floor? Mm -hmm. Truthfully, I would like them to tire of the floor. I'll come back. <laughs> sure, I'll do back. it again. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that's the, what I'm in the business <clears throat> of. Yeah. So that's good, but let's let's talk about budget because we have an awful lot of conversations. About. We've had many conversations this week about budget. Yeah, yeah but it's good. We have because we work together a lot. Yep. So tell me, like, tell me because maybe I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> and and tell the viewer how it is that you <clears throat> you look at budget, where you start, 
where the design process starts to look at budget. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think you and I had a conversation about let's start having that conversation. Let's back that conversation up earlier. Earlier. Yeah. But let's. Let's go down to, because you worked for a lot of renovation firms before yes. you went out on my own, went out on your own. Mm-hmm. Some clients budget isn't an issue. Some sure. clients budget is an issue. Some, some clients can be um, defensive about it. Mm-hmm. If you ask too soon, why are you asking about my budget? Are you trying to soak me for as much money as you get? Right. So it's a, it's an interesting conversation with the client. It's an interesting you know, conversation with your general contractor, but where do you start? First conversation. You bring it up right away. Right away. Now, not like, hi, how are you? What's your budget? Like, (laughs) (laughs) he's into it a little bit. But the reason I ask, and I don't say budget, I use the term investment. Because once you start having a client, a homeowner, think about that they're investing in their home and in their lifestyle and themselves. It's a different, you're just changing the perception of it. It's not as scary. Mm -hmm. And the reason I ask and I explain to them why I'm asking what their intended investment level is, <clears throat> is because it could be different things, to different people. Um, somebody who's looking to renovate their, their kitchen for, you know, $30,000. It's like, okay, $30,000 is going to what? Right. Yeah, right. Um, and yeah, it's cause that's still- a hard number. 30,000 in material, 30,000 in labor. Just you know, countertops, just cab- cabinets. Like, cab- what are we talking about? What are we about? talking about? Yeah. Right? Because there's a lot of the costs that you don't see that they don't think about. They just think cabinets, countertops, plumbing fixtures, light fixtures, and like flooring, and like that's it. Yeah. It's like, well, how's it going to get there and how's it going to be installed? Right. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So, and $30,000 is a lot of money. Yes. It's a lot of money. Yes. Even for somebody who has no budget, it's still a lot of money. Yeah. So, I have to approach it from a, a stance of, Finding out the information in order to educate. Um, Pricing of renovations has changed so much over the last four years. Since the pandemic. Since the pandemic. During the pandemic, even before the pandemic, like things just like they just keep keep going up. Labor has gone up significantly um, in the last year and a half. Yeah. People want more money. They need more money because everything's more expensive. Cost of living is more expensive. Groceries. So that electrician... (laughs) <laughs> you know, we, we can do a whole podcast, podcast, a podcast, oh. a podcast on uh, on groceries. But uh, the electrician that's in there, the hourly yeah. rate has gone up significantly because he's got to get gas in his truck, and he's got to, you know, his kids have all the things that they have, and and you know, it's really, really gone up. But, mm-hmm. So, so the reason why I talk about budget from the very beginning, and I tell a client. The reason I ask is not that I'm looking to max out your budget. I want to understand. You're looking to blow right past it. Right past it, folks. Right past past it. it. Yeah, let's triple your budget. No, (laughs) no. But part of it is just educating on, okay, this is what we have to work with. Or is this what you think the reno is going to cost? Those are two different things. Right. Because a lot of the time clients will say, well, I have the money to do this, but I don't want to spend all my money. This is what I want to spend. So then my job is to educate and say, okay, well, this is what it's going to get, like what you're going to be able to get out of that budget. Right. Or the images that you're showing me off Pinterest and all of these things that you love and, you know, fluted marble around your island and like all of these things. We want that. Sure. But that's going to cost this. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you mentioned Pinterest. Yes. Because uh, a lot of times I bring you onto the jobs, not mm-hmm. you bring me, right? Mm-hmm. That's just the way that it's just the way it's people call the general out. contractor. Yeah. Works, right. Yeah. So my firm goes over there, the sales guy goes over or whatever. And you know what we say? We say, if you've seen it on Pinterest, so have the tilers, so have the carpenters, so have the electricians. So, you know, and, and they realize how hard it is because when they see it on tri- Pinterest, herringbone tile, mm-hmm. they're look, not looking at it. That's how beautiful it is. They know how long it takes yep. to do properly. Yep. Right. And they, the people that I use, I mean, you know, this is a good thing, but the people that I use want to do a good job. Mm-hmm. It's reflective of them. Mm-hmm. They know it's a reflective of me. Mm-hmm. So they can't slap it up. You know, yeah, we can find someone to do herringbone in two hours. Uh, you know, when I say, when I say herringbone, I'm talking about a herringbone subway tile in a shower or sure. whatever, you know, not necessarily a backsplash, not the sheets that you buy and glue on. I'm talking about individual 
hardwood floor. We are involved right now with a client who had a herringbone done and it all needs to come up. Like we didn't no. do it. We're being hired to to pull it all up. But Oh, that breaks my heart. Because I think they got the slap down price. Oh, that's awful. But this is this is what people don't realize that when you're looking at those expensive things, we are looking at those things not because we're visualizing sitting down in our living room with our herringbone hardwood floor, because we're looking at it thinking, that's going to take me eight times as long Mm -hmm. as a standard floor. Mm -hmm. And every now and then, you'll get a young contractor. I was this person once. Were you? Yeah, a young contractor, a long time ago, who I really have high standards, and I made it look beautiful. But I didn't make any money. Let's say you lost your shirt. And yeah. I made that mistake once, twice, mm-hmm. not a third time. Yep. And now I'd rather not do it. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And these are the hard conversations that I have with clients about these Pinterest things that I show up and they're like, can you do this in my bathroom? And this is, so when I show up and I'm talking to a client about budget, typically I don't, I actually say, don't tell me your budget. I'll tell you my costs. And then you can work backwards. So if I'm doing a typical bathroom, that's a, you know, we talked about that a few minutes ago, the remove, the install. Mm -hmm. I can have a real conversation about what that typically average costs just to do. Mm -hmm. And then they can show me Mm -hmm. the Pinterest and I can go, well, that's not typical. Mm -hmm. Herringbone's not typical. That's right. Right. And then I can start out at a base and raise them up. Yeah. Right. Be like, this is the base price working with contractor Ryan and our team. Yeah. And then for anything... There's additional. Yeah. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. No. Because I think it's really important for clients to understand what a baseline would be. Mm Because everyone has has their own idea of what Cadillac is. Like the Cadillac of this, the Cadillac of that. Right. Which we'll, I'm sure, get into in a second. But, (laughs) But all that to say, when I go through the design process with a client and we go through like the material selections and I have already square foot pricing for tile from the contractor and i've right. got your plumbing fixture budget and your electrical fixture budget and i've got your um countertops cabinet like at least budget allocations or pricing yeah that way i design within the budget that you've agreed upon with the client mm-hmm. so that i'm not designing out of budget then i can at least advise the client and say okay we've got x amount of dollars to work with per square foot for the flooring yeah and Based on the images and all the things that you love, I know that this is the look that you're going for. So where, like, where do you want to invest your money? And if they say, I really love that herringbone tile, okay, then it's not only is the tile probably going to be more money, you have your waist and cuts that you have to take into account, and it's not going to be the same as a straight 12 by 24 straight stack install. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to have those conversations yeah. with them mm-hmm. because I also know from a construction knowledge standpoint that it does take more. Yeah. It's not just about like, let's just pick everything and just like hope it's in budget <laughs> or like hope that the installer can, it can it do it within. You just, just make it, work. it make it work. It would be so irresponsible of me just to think about my my yeah. job, my part of the process without thinking about the next person in line and yeah. what they have to go through or the time it's going to take them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I have a final topic and we're going to run this podcast a little late to have this conversation. Yeah. What is your biggest challenge? Not particularly in one renovation, like not with just dealing with me, but what is your, your biggest challenge that you deal with on a day-to-day basis? It's repetitive and you have to see it over and over again. It depends on the type of project. Like I see anything from just picking materials for, um, you know, a home that's already been designed and and I'm doing the material selections and the drawings and the finishing pack, package mm-hmm. all the way to like a renovation, an addition or a full custom design, like a full custom build yeah. that I would do from the ground up. So I see quite a lot okay. of different scopes. Yeah. I think the budget conversation, small or big, is probably the biggest hurdle, okay. but it's the most important conversation to have and not just once it's every single meeting right talking about every single product and i might sound like a broken record but if i don't advise or if i just not talk about it during one meeting like it just it's 
you're going to the client will lose sight of it and think that everything's oh okay. everything's okay and this is all good. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to have somebody who understands bigger picture. Yeah. You know, and like talking about the installation method and how much more expensive it is or, right. you know, the type of lighting that that is more expensive to install than just a surface mount light, like having that understanding. But budget is the is the biggest, I think, hurdle. It's not a bad conversation. It doesn't have to be bad. I had to get really comfortable having that conversation with clients like very, very early on. Yeah. 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 And I tell them, I said, I, I, I say to clients all the time, if you don't tell me, then I can't help you. Yeah. Yeah. You can't ensure that it's going to be in budget. That's right. Because the last thing I want to do is design something with a client, show them all their hopes and dreams and everything that they didn't even know that they want. And they fall in love with everything to then break their heart because they can't afford to do it. Mm-hmm. it's just not not what you want to do it's not what i want to do it's no. not what i want to do for them i wouldn't want it done to me right having renovated my own home inside out everything that these clients are going through and that they're gonna have to contemplate i have done it myself so i get it mm-hmm. so having that understanding of you know what they're going to be um embarking on like that journey through the design process to get them to construction yeah. i get it so i try and impart that wisdom and <laughs> And say, you know, right. when I did this, these are the things that I need to think of as well. Cool. So then I'm speaking from a point of experience and not just, you know, on the outside trying to design pretty spaces and yeah. not being aware of what things are actually going to cost. Okay. Yeah. So this is what you're leaving the viewers with today. You're leaving them with monitor the budget, mm-hmm. understand the space, talk about whether or not you're doing this for 10 years or five years or if it's your lifetime home Mm -hmm. right don't worry about design trends worry about what you love yeah because in the end you need to know you need to you need to understand you need to respect what it is you're going to be living in absolutely thanks for coming thanks for having me